Book Fight fans. Thanks for joining us here at the Grizzly Rose for Sparta Combat League's Fight Night 7. I am J.R. Gordon. Alongside Ron Goldstein, we'll be calling the action for you tonight. We're getting our first couple fighters. Welcome to the cage right now. And his opponent fighting out of the Blue Corps Shooting Center Blue Corps, Brandon Taylor. As your fight fans can tell by the gloves being worn here, this is Muay Thai action to get things started this evening. Ron, you and I love watching the resurgence of Muay Thai in Colorado. You know, it's one of those things, JR, that we kind of, you know, the the, the real long-term, deep-rooted fans of fighting just love watching the striking sports, of course. And when we see what we have here in Muay Thai, you know, we are, we're, we're basically spoiled. I mean, you know, we have such great Muay Thai fighters here and coaches. How that, can we not love it here? There's a reason glory is coming That's to Denver. That's exactly <laughs> right. That's exactly right. All right, we're taking a look at the tail of the tape here, yep. pretty close in age with these guys. Same with the height, of course, they had to weigh in at the same weight. A little bit of an experience advantage for Brandon Taylor. And interestingly enough, for our Muay Thai fight, we see both these guys wearing MMA gloves in their fight <laughs> pictures. So, I guess a little they do bit some of crossover. <laughs> yeah, I guess they do some other things. Yes, sir. I'm excited for this one. I love the fight nights here at SCL. They just these are the types of shows, JR, you and I have talked about this a gazillion times before. These are the types of shows that literally steal the show every yeah, time. So absolutely. I expect nothing different out of Fight Night 7 tonight here at the Grizzly Rose in beautiful Denver, Colorado. Ladies and gentlemen, this title fight is brought to you by Jimmy Loop of Loveland, the official car care center of SBL Fight Night 7. Let's meet your two fighters. Fighting first out of the Dynamic Mortgage Concepts red corner. He stands at 5'11", weighed in at 164 pounds. From Bang Muay Thai, with a record of three and two, from Salt Lake City, fighting out of Denver, Colorado, Casey Raya. And his opponent fighting out of the Blue Corps Shooting Center Blue Corner. He stands at 5 foot 11 inches tall, weighed in at 165 pounds. Training out of DCO MMA with a record of two and zero. From Westminster, Colorado, Brandon Taylor. You heard our ring announcer, Brent Bradley. We have, excuse me, Radon wearing the red. Taylor's wearing the yellow. Third man in the cage, one of the best in the biz referee, Tom Johnson wearing the black and white. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> Could not agree more. And a bad dude himself. <laughs> yes, indeed. Judges ready. Timekeepers ready. Fight fans ready. Here we go, Ron. 165-pound title action. And Radon coming out looking to press the action first. And uh, you saw him running into the cage, looking pretty aggressive, like he wanted to get things going, and it's exactly what he's doing here in round one. He is, and a little bit of experience already showing from Taylor. As Taylor's doing a very good job of gauging distance. Yeah, really nice job of being invasive by Taylor. Mm -hmm. Oh, and a nice good, hook. good catch and counter mm -hmm. by Taylor. Shows some experience there for sure. I see Radon kind of uh, telegraphing that straight right hand. And see if Taylor can pick up on that. Just heard the corner of Radon saying settle down a little bit. So giving, giving even his corner a little more action uh -huh. than he wants. And like you said, Ron, it's because he's winding up a little bit, trying to put everything into every shot, easier for somebody with Taylor's experience to see it coming. Both of these guys come from really good camps. Radon coming from Bang Muay Thai. 
Taylor coming from DCO MMA. Yeah, Radon definitely winding up on the kicks. You can tell he wants to put that one up there. And again, Taylor able to see it coming. We'll have to see if that's an adjustment that if we go into the second round, which we probably will because there's only about 15 seconds left. We'll have to see if that's an adjustment that Radon's corner gets him to make. Radon making some good contact here with Taylor. Had him against the cage. And he's doing a nice job of pressing the action against the cage. Good first round for Radon. It was indeed. Kept a pretty fast pace, Ron. Very, yeah. It'd be, be difficult for him to keep that same pace for another two rounds, I believe. I'll tell you, I'm taking a look at him right now in this corner, and he's, he's taking some big breaths right there. And Taylor not even using the stool over in his corner. I think Taylor did a nice job of uh, pacing himself a little bit better than Radon did in this, in that first round. I think he was uh, kind of wanting to see what Radon's offering first is, is probably the right way to say it. And uh, as we take a look at this Blue Core Shooting Center replay, the forward pressure of Radon. But again, we talked about that good distance control from uh, Brandon Taylor. Yeah, Taylor did a nice job of keeping himself out of danger, but there was minimal effective strikes from That's either right. fighter, so the judges got to look at the aggression. That's I give right. round one to Radon. I agree with you. Unofficially, that is. Yep. Yeah, Radon doing his best aggressive look across the cage again. Mean mugging everywhere. <laughs> And now I'm going to look for Brandon Taylor to kind of really start putting things together here. Agreed. I think he has. I think he has a read on yep. Radon. Yep. He's measured the distance. He has his timing. Knows that he has to evade that power because Radar Radon is still bringing it with some ferocity. He is. I think the the key right now for Brandon Taylor, he's got to keep those hands up. I, I see those hands dipping a little bit. Yep. And Radon is, is dangerous, especially with these uh, with those spinning attacks that he's throwing. Nice hook right there, lands well for Taylor. But again, good forward pressure from Radon. Really good forward pressure. Yeah, he's just continually bringing the action, forcing the fight. Taylor, like we've said, doing a great job of keeping himself safe, but you know, there's more to a fight than that. Yep. And I think for Radon, the key is going to be for him. He's got to keep that chin tucked down because if Brandon Taylor starts to throw, he's got power too. And I think Radon significantly tired now. I, I he's see the hiding same. it well, but his footwork had a big stumble in it and he fell against the that. cage. I saw that too. He just seems, seems like he's off balance a little bit from trying to catch his win. And there's that shot that I was just talking about. Going to be hard for Taylor to score well backing up, though, and that's primarily what he's been relegated to. Very difficult way to fight. Very, very difficult way to look like the aggressor in the fight. Yeah. There's there's literally few in the world that can do that's it well. That's so true. So true. And here comes the action. This is that pocket fighting that we were kind of expecting to see. Good way to close out the second round for both guys. Nice job. <laughs> right there in Taylor's corner, all he did was put his hands up and lean against the cage. Okay. <laughs> Pretty convenient spot. <laughs> Good second round. Much, much better second round from both guys. And uh, I do like the forward pressure that I see from Radon, and I think that uh, if he can kind of get himself to understand the distance a little bit better, I think he can put some combinations together that could land. And I'll be honest with you, he kept a stronger pace in round two than I thought he'd Definitely. be able to. Yep. Yep. But if he's able to do that again in, in the third round, he's been the one that's walked down his opponent and stalked forward all, all fight. Checking out the replay here, and this is toward the end of the round, and finally we see Taylor firing off with some combinations, and partly the reason for that is because his back was against the cage. He couldn't back up anymore. That's right. I do think that he's going to be able to find some success with that uppercut. As Radon comes in, when he throws, he instinctively tucks that chin down and dips that head. 
So I'm wondering if Brandon Taylor sees the same thing. Maybe can capitalize with something up the middle. So what I'm interested oh. in is can Radon keep that pace? Oh. Well, they're, they're for sure going to try. Look at this. Brutal <laughs> leg kick from Radon. Oh, that was just crushing. Friday nights are made for fighting. Look at this. Look at these two go. Well, Radon right now has got to get those hands up for sure. Keep that chin tucked when you're throwing combinations. Taylor's waiting on him. Yeah, he's been a little bit loose with his techniques all night. And don't That's need, fatigue. You know, if, <laughs> if you're ahead here, which you and I both believe he is, you don't need to give it away. I definitely see the fatigue, though, right now. Although uh, Radon just stabbed Taylor with the teep kick yep. that started to fold him a little bit. But, of course, right as I was pointing that out, Taylor came with a nice series of knees. Now you see the fatigue and you see this technique kind of start to slide out that window a little bit. But again, that's the norm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's indicative of most fights. Very, very exhausting sport. Good connections being made from both these guys, but Radon doing a really nice job of making Brandon Taylor fight going backwards, and that's a problem. Yeah, Taylor occasionally setting his feet, firing off one or two, but that's after Radon's fired off eight or ten. Oh, good, good punch there by Taylor. And I see Brandon Taylor getting a little tired too, but that chin is exposed right there yep. from Radon. You talked about those hands coming down. 10 second clacker sounded. Definitely some of the most effective punches of the fight for Taylor here late in the third. But uh, judges gonna have to let us know if they see it the way that the experts you and I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm funny to uh, us. You are, that's good stuff, JR. <laughs> good stuff. Good fight for Radon, I'll tell you. I, I like what he did. I like that pressure. I liked him, you know, making Brandon Taylor fight going backwards. As you referenced, JR, there's only a few people in the world that can really do that well. Yeah. Um, you know, Anderson Silva always comes to mind when you think about something like that. Not everybody's an Anderson Silva. Yeah. <laughs> Take a look at this blue core shooting center replay, JR. Forward, forward, forward. Radon Story doesn't. The fight for Radon. Yeah, I was gonna say he doesn't understand taking backward steps, and I like that. Yeah, as a coach, if if you've got a fighter, <laughs> that's their natural tendency. That's one less thing you have to try to instill in them. See you at the gym tomorrow. <laughs> right. <laughs> Good fight for both these guys. Good start to the show. From yes. here on out, it's all MMA action. You got to love fight night. I mean, Friday nights, right? <laughs> Friday night fight night. Good way to start the night off. Both these guys are got a lot of energy left. Which my critique is, why didn't you use that in the fight? That's, <laughs> the, yeah. I bet you that's their coaches <laughs> thinking too, right? But I think, you know, I think that they, I think both of those guys can actually take a lot from that fight. They can go back to that gym. They can literally see where they made the mistakes. They can see where the technique was Slipping away as fatigue set in. And uh, for both these guys, I think that they can take a couple of those pieces. I think for Radon, I think uh, keeping those hands up, keeping that chin down during late exchanges. Yeah. And I think for Brandon Taylor, stepping into the pocket and not fighting backwards the whole time. Yeah, I agree. And for Radon, just a little more measured pace. That's right. That's as right. As opposed to a full out furious flurry. That's right. Obviously, the technique is there, the conditioning is there. Just, you know, be, 
be like your mentor, bang, and find those targets. Absolutely right. I'm curious how the judges have it. That was kind of an even fight. But I do think that the advantage did come in, in, uh, in the form of uh, Radon just pushing forward the entire yeah, fight. Yeah, agreed. Let's not forget, this is a title fight. Got it the, is. Got uh, belt hanging out on the far side of the cage there. 165 pound Ami belt. Yes, sir. Somebody going home with some hardware. Little bling to hang off the rear view mirror. Moon's over Miami. Miami. The one. <laughs> Did they forget to bring a calculator tonight? It's, it's three columns and two numbers. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right, here we go. Take it away, Brent. Ladies and gentlemen, this title fight has gone to a judge's decision. Judge number one scores about 29 28. Radon. Judge number two scores the bout, 29-28, Taylor. And judge number three scores the bout, 30-27, for your winner by split decision, fighting out of the Dynamic Mortgage Concepts Red Corner, Casey Radon. Casey, congratulations on a great fight and your title win. I'm sure you've got a couple of people you'd like to thank. Yeah, I got a big old list, long list of people. First off, foremost, I'd like to thank Jamie Hall, standing by next to me through all this shit. Give my back, I'd like to thank all my coaches. Sam Kouse over at the Wig Martial Arts, Jared Kelm from Utah. I'd like to like my strength and conditioning coach, Coach McCabe, you the man. I'd like to thank the Soichi. Dan the man, Dan Eisen, and everybody for coming out. All my people, thanks, man. It's just the beginning. Casey, thank you. Congratulations on your title. Have a good night. Can't wait to see you back in the cage. Thanks, bro. We'll be right back with fight number two. I'm backstage with Casey Radden. He just won the 165-pound Muay Thai title for Sparta Combat League. Casey, how you feeling? I feel 100, man. I feel great. Feels good to win. <laughs> you came forward throwing some spinning strikes. You were putting a lot of pressure on him, some good ring control from you. What do you think you did to win that fight that ended in a split decision? Yeah, I knew Brandon was going to be a tough competitor coming out ready to throw. So I knew if I followed my punches up with kicks, and follow my kicks up with punches that it would make money. Exactly, you sure did. Um, so I know you that you moved here recently from Utah. You're now training at Ludwig Martial Arts in Westminster. How has that helped your training? Uh, it's helped my training tons with Ludwig there. Dwayne, he's the top of the game. You know, he, he's the man, his striking is impeccable. Sam Couch with my jujitsu. I, I really been working my game all around. I've been dialing my diet, my strength and conditioning with Coach McCabe. It's been on point. That's great. You were throwing some great kicks. He landed some heavy punches. Were you ever hurt in that fight? No, I never felt. I, I mean, I felt the punches, but they didn't hurt. You know, they kind of throw you off and get you stumbled up, but I just finished up and it worked out. You sure did. Congratulations on your win. Enjoy the night. Much. 